Good day students, welcome to MacGoodServe.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over problems 26 to 30 of the CVS Practice Mathematics exam, focusing on computation and problem solving. All right, let's take a look at uh, question 26. It says, Kiko spends the day bird watching and counted 34 more birds in the morning than in the afternoon. If she counted a total of 76 birds, how many birds did she count in the afternoon? Okay, so this problem involves converting a word problem into a system of equations. So anytime you want to generate uh, an equation or system of equations using uh, a problem presented in a story or word problem format, you uh, want to declare your variables first, okay? So you don't get confused um, in the problem solving process. Steps we're going to execute are as follows. Uh, first of all, we will declare our variables, the unknown. We'll then set up a system of equations using the variables, and then we will solve the system by substitution. Now, why are we using substitution to solve the system? Well, you see um, the reason why in a second. Okay, so let's go ahead and declare our variables first. Operation. Now, uh, there are two unknowns in this problem. We have, um, let's see number of birds in the morning and number of birds in the afternoon okay so let's do this let m be number of birds counted in the morning and um let's see a let that be the number of birds counted in the afternoon All right, so now that we have uh, declared our variables, we can go ahead and advance to step two where we'll start setting up a system of equations, okay? Uh, the first equation we know has to do with the total uh, number of birds. There are a total of 76 birds, okay? So uh, what does that tell us? So total number of birds, total number of birds, is equal to what? Is equal to um, number of birds in the morning plus the number of birds in the afternoon, number of birds counted, okay? All right, so what do we know? We know that the total number of birds is 76 and the total number of birds in the morning, we are going to represent it by M based on our declaration here. So the number of birds in the afternoon, we're going to replace it with A based on our declaration here. Okay. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is equation number one. There's another statement in the problem that can help us generate the second equation. The statement is that um, Kiko was able to count 34 more birds in the morning than in the afternoon. Okay, 34 more in the morning than in the afternoon. So how do we represent that with an equation? So let's, M, M is the total number of birds in the morning, right? So how does that relate to the total number of birds in the afternoon? There's 34 more in the morning than in the afternoon. So we're going to take the number of birds in the afternoon and do what? Add 34 to that. So 34 more. Um, then the afternoon will give you the number of birds in the morning, okay? So this is equation number two. So we're going to solve this system of equations by uh, substitution. So why are we using substitution here? That was a question I posed earlier. Well, we've been noticed in equation two, one of the, of the variables has been solved explicitly for m. Okay, so all we just have to do is substitute the value of m into the first equation and then we can solve it. So let's substitute um, a plus 34 for m in equation 1. All right, so what does that yield? We have 76 equals, instead of m, we have a plus 34, okay, plus a. Now let's solve this um, equation. We uh, 
can just drop that parenthesis. There's a one in front. Just distribute that one. Nothing changes. E plus 34 plus A. And then uh, we collect like terms. So 34 is a constant. We move that to the left side. And then we have 76 minus 34 is equal to A plus A. 36 minus 34 is 21. No, actually, it's not 21, it's 42. 76 plus, um, 36 minus 34 is 42. A plus A is 2A. Okay, imagine there's a one here and one here. You just add the coefficients. Divide both sides by two. And then you end up with your final answer. A is equal to 21. Now, what does this mean? A is a number of birds in the afternoon. What was the question asking for? How many birds were there in the afternoon? So number of birds in the afternoon is 21. Our answer is option letter A. Okay, let's take a look at problem 27. In this equation, we're asked to solve for y. So we have y minus 2 plus 3y equals 10, similar to what one of the steps we did in the previous problem. So one thing I want to keep in mind is that when they ask you to solve it, you're simply isolating the indicated variable. So in this case, we want to isolate y on one side of the equation. Okay. Steps are as follows. We're going to collect like terms, combine like terms, and then isolate y. Now, if you notice in this equation, we have one constant on the right. That's good. But on the left, we have variables and a constant. So we need to get move this constant over here. So we have the constants on the right side and then the variable terms um, in terms of y on the left. All right, to accomplish that, we'll add 2 to both sides of the equation. That results in y plus 3y equals 10 plus 2. Okay, notice what I've just accomplished. I've collected all the variables in terms of y to the left and the constants on the right. Combine these two. Imagine the one here, you have 4y equals is 12, divide both sides by 4, and your final answer is y equals 3, option letter B. All right, let's take a look at question 28. It says a refrigerator in a school cafeteria is partially filled with 42 sandwiches. There are 13 turkey sandwiches, 14 cheese sandwiches, and 15 egg salad sandwiches. By the end of the lunch period, 21 of the sandwiches have been sold. Question, which of the following facts can be determined from the information given above? So this one can be done by simply um, using the method of elimination. We are going to try and see if we can determine a, a statement. If we can't, we'll just eliminate that, okay? Quest, option number one, it says the number of cheese sandwiches sold. There were a total of 21 sandwiches sold. How many of them were cheese sandwiches? It is not indicated. All right, so the type of sandwiches sold is an unknown, so this cannot be determined. The cost of a turkey sandwich, look at this problem. All we have are quantities. We have quantities only, no cost. Eliminate that option, number letter C. The total number of sandwiches that can be placed in the refrigerator. Now, we're told that the refrigerator was partially filled with 42 sandwiches. Does that tell you the capacity of the refrigerator? Partially filled does not give you an exact percentage or um, a fractional uh, representation, so it is impossible to determine the capacity of the refrigerator based on it being partially filled with 42 sandwiches, so we eliminate option letter C. Option D, the total dollar sales of sandwiches during the lunch period. Again, what are we provided here? These are quantity, quantitative values. There's no mention of cost. So option D cannot be determined. Based on method of elimination, our correct answer should be E, but we have to make sure we can just assume, okay? So option E says the number of sandwiches remaining in the refrigerator after the lunch period. Can we calculate that? There were a total of 42 sandwiches. Uh, 21 were sold. So what does that tell you? You subtract it. What does this number represent? The number 
of sandwiches remaining. So this can, option E, can be determined. So our answer for 28 is option letter E. All right, let's take a look at question 29. It says, um, Wei Jen and Su are going to drive cross country. To reach their destination, they plan to drive about 400 miles each day for five days. If gasoline costs an average of $2 per gallon, approximately how much money should they budget for gasoline on this trip? Question, which single piece of information is necessary to solve the problem? Okay, so if you're going on a trip, how do you know how much money you're going to spend on gasoline? So the formula you're going to use is as follows. So total cost, total cost, this is your formula for calculating um, the cost of, it, of just gasoline on a trip. So total cost is basically the distance that you're traveling multiplied by the cost of gasoline. And that entire uh, expression divided by your um, uh, consumption, okay? Your fuel consumption it is also referred as your gas mileage. So how much gas does your car consume? Okay, so this is basically how you calculate the total cost uh, for gasoline when you're going on a trip, all right? So... These are uh, the components that we need to calculate the total cost are all these listed on the left side right here. So let's go ahead and see what's missing. Now, um, distance, is that a missing piece of information? The answer is no. Notice they're traveling 400 miles per day for five days. So your distance is 400 times the number of days that you're traveling 400 miles each 400 times 5, you have a total of 2,000 miles that um, are going to be covered on the trip, okay? What is the cost of gasoline? Is that uh, already provided for us? The answer is yes. The cost of gasoline is $2 per gallon. All right. And then the last piece of information we need, we need to divide everything by your gas mileage. Are you driving a Prius or a Hummer? How, how much cons gas does your car consume? That is critical to calculate your total cost, all right? Uh, so if you take a look at this problem right here, the information that we have just helps us compute the distance, 405, and the cost, $2 per gallon. There's no mention of gas mileage here or fuel consumption. So that's the missing piece of information. So if you look at the Options, number of times they will have to stop, that doesn't affect the cost. The number of miles per gallon of gasoline, exactly what we're looking for, all right? Remember, gas mileage is also known as MPG, okay, miles per gallon. So the number of miles per gallon of gasoline that your car consumes is critical in determining how much money you need to budget for the trip. If you have a high MPG, then you want to spend more money, I mean, less money because you, you consume less gas. And if MPG is really low, then that means you're going to use more gas and you want to budget more money. So answer for 29 is option letter B. All right, let's take a look at 30. Uh, it says read, um, read the problem below and then answer the question that follows. Maria left her home at 9 a.m., ran three miles to the lake, ran around the lake twice, they ran home along the same route for a total distance of 10 miles. What was Maria's average speed, uh, jog speed? Question, which single piece of inf additional information is required to solve the problem? So let's write down the formula first for average speed. Think about speed as rate, okay? We know the dirt formula, distance is equal to rate times time. So when I isolate rates, we divide both sides by time. Okay, so rate is basically distance over time. So your average speed is your total distance divided by time. Okay, 
All right, so these are the pieces of information that are needed, distance and time to calculate the um, average speed. All right, let's see what we have and what's missing. Distance. Do we know the total distance that Maria traveled? The answer is yes. It says total distance of 10 miles, so that is known. How about time? How much time did she spend jogging? When did she get home? She left at 9 a.m., right? When does she get home? It's not mentioned, so we do not know what the time is. So the time that she spent um, jogging will basically tell us how to calculate the average speed. Okay, so let's look at the information we have here. Remember, we're calculating time from when she departed to when she returned. The distance around the lake, no. That's not time provided for us. Um, we can calculate what the distance around the lake is, but that's irrelevant since all we need is the total distance of 10 miles. The time she returned home, voila. If she returned home at, let's say, 12, uh, no, let's say 11 a.m., for instance, what does that tell us? If she returns home at 11 a.m., that tells us that she spent a total time of two hours, right? Because 11 minus 9. So if, if um, the time that she returned is specified, that helps us calculate the total number of time she spent jogging, divide the distance by that value, and that will give us the average speed. Answer for number 30 is option letter B. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Really appreciate it. If you found the contents of this uh, tutorial helpful in your preparation for the upcoming CVEST exam, do give us a thumbs up. Your positive feedback is very valuable to us. If you have any questions about any math content that um, you're preparing for on the upcoming test, you can just ask your questions in the comment section below and we'll be more than glad to support you. More clips can be found on mathgodserve.com under test prep. Don't forget to subscribe for the remainder of this review series. Thanks again for watching and have a